My name is Christy Reggio and I'm with Medtronic. Some of you may know Medtronic as the company that invented the pacemaker back in the 1950s. Tonight, Dr. Ali Syed will be with, with Advanced Urology Institute will be discussing treatments they, that may help patients who have symptoms of overactive bladder, urinary incontinence, retention of urine and bowel incontinence. One of these treatments was developed by Medtronic about 25 years ago, and it's called InnerStem. It was developed, it was um, approved on the market in 1997, and since then patients around the world have been receiving relief from this therapy. We will have a poll this evening, so please take a moment to answer the poll questions that appear on your screen. As a reminder, everyone's phones were muted upon entry of this webinar, and you are muted. If you do have a question, please feel free to type it in the Q&A box at the lower portion of your screen. And the doctor will answer these questions after the presentation. Again, this presentation is being recorded. There will be a short survey at the end of the presentation so that you can share your thoughts. But I would like to, at this time, introduce Dr. Syed. Dr. Syed. Thank you, Christy, for the kind introduction, and I welcome everyone who's joined us this evening. Um, so we're going to talk about some bladder and bowel issues today. Let's see if we can get these slides to forward. All right, so surprisingly, 50% of uh, patients have had incontinence, and they just have not discussed this with their doctor, whether it be their primary care doctor or their urologist. I often see patients in the office, and, and they ask questions such as, uh, will I ever regain control? How can I possibly go on a date? Can I attend an outdoor celebration? Um, I'm afraid to leave my home, you know, and the bathroom is basically always on my mind and I map out my routes so that I know where the next bathroom is. So the agenda today is to understand bladder and bowel control, to kind of figure out the care pathway, to discuss some treatment options, to discuss the Medtronic inner stem system, to discuss the Medtronic neurosystem, and then we'll answer some uh, questions. So the thing that uh, amazes me and amazes a lot of patients when I tell them these statistics is that overactive bladder and fecal incontinence are extremely common. Uh, one in six adults have OAB or overactive bladder, and that accounts to 37 million Americans. And similarly, one in 12 Americans have fecal incontinence, and that accounts to about 20 million Americans. So compare this to something that's common, such as vision problems, that's about 12 million adults. Uh, or people with asthma in the U.S., that's 17 million. So way more people have overactive bladder and fecal incontinence. Um, but the biggest issue is that people um, don't like talking about it because they're embarrassed. So the question is, what is normal? I often hear uh, that I felt that I'm having these symptoms just because I'm getting older. But the reality is that urinary and bowel incontinence are not a normal part of aging. Um, so people come to me with frequent accidents. Uh, I have to go now. Um, they plan their activities around a bathroom. They monitor what they eat or drink and often restrict what they drink uh, at the time of events and often uh, are using pads and protective garments. So it's kind of important to know what the normal physiology is. So the question is, how does bladder control work? So normally your kidneys uh, make urine and the urine is stored in the bladder. When the bladder is about half full, it stimulates your nerves by telling your brain, hey, I have to go to the bathroom. And then the job of the brain is to coordinate with your bladder when it's socially acceptable for you to go pee. And what happens in overactive bladder is the control between the nervous system and the bladder breaks down. And therefore, the social cue uh, is gone away. So you cannot control, hey, I don't have a bathroom nearby. I want to hold on. That does not exist anymore. Similarly, bowel control works in a very similar fashion. So you eat, the digestive system pushes the food through your intestine. Ultimately, it reaches the rectum. And when the rectum is full, it stimulates your nerves or, or sends a signal to your brain saying, hey, is it socially acceptable for me to go have a bowel movement? And if it's not, your brain tells your rectum um, to no, find a bathroom, wait. Um, and when you do, it relaxes your sphincter muscle. And similarly, when there's a communication breakdown between the brain and the rectum, it causes issues with controlling your bowel movements. So what causes incontinence? Um, various different things. So there's daily habits in regards to what you're eating and drinking. 
Uh, sometimes medications can cause incontinence. Sometimes reduced uh, physical mobility can be associated with incontinence. And finally, common things such as pregnancy, childbirth, radiation, pelvic floor injury, previous surgeries of the pelvic floor, prostate surgery in men, all of these things can be associated with um, urinary incontinence. So there's three common bladder control problems that we often see. Uh, one is stress urinary incontinence, and I, I we'll define this a little bit more, but the key here is that stress urinary incontinence is not treated by the Medtronic system. There's urinary retention, and then there's overactive bladder, which also has urgent incontinence. That's where you have to go and you have accidents in trying to make to the bathroom. So as I mentioned, so what is stress urinary incontinence? So this is the leakage that you experience when you sneeze, when you cough, when you laugh, or if you get up too quick, or if you're exercising, um, you're going up the stairs, then you experience a little bit of leakage. So the, this is the accidents that happens with activity really. And this again is not treated by the Medtronic system. There are other treatment modalities for this that exist that we're not talking about today, but this is a treatable condition. Next, what is urinary retention? So this is the feeling where you can't tell your bladder is full or you know it's full, but you're unable to empty it. Um, and sometimes the symptoms that are associated with it is weak dribbling stream. Sometimes you have to use a catheter. I've seen patients that come to me with a catheter in place. Um, and so that is urinary retention. And we work that up to see if it can be fixed by a uh, stimulator. And finally, what is overactive bladder? So overactive bladder has two components, urge incontinence and urgency frequency. So what urge incontinence means is that you start going before you reach the bathroom, meaning you have accidents before you make it to the bathroom. Um, and often you're wearing pads and protective garments um, out of embarrassment. Urinary frequency is something similar. Basically, it's you have to go to the bathroom quite frequently throughout the day. And that's more than that's defined as more than eight times. Um, the only good thing here is that you're not having accidents. So you have to go real bad. You are able to make it to the bathroom or you're going quite frequently. And again, patients tell me uh, things like, Hey, I never drink, drink a meeting. Or when I go out for dinner, I don't drink much uh, because I'm worried about having a accident. Finally, what is uh, fecal incontinence? So this is a entity that again is quite common, but, uh, unfortunately, um, oh, people are embarrassed to talk about it, but basically this is a urge incontinence, which is an inability to resist the urge to go and you have an accident uh, with your stool. And similarly, passive incontinence is the inability to feel the need to go uh, to the bathroom to move your bowels. So the good news is there are various treatment options and all of them have a uh, good success rate and we'll discuss some of them. So basically the pathway in, in diagnosing this is when you come to the office, we run some tests, we make a diagnosis to see uh, what type of incontinence or bowel issues we have. Then we usually recommend dietary and lifestyle changes. If that doesn't work, we add a medication. And if that doesn't work, then we really discuss some advanced uh, therapies. So that, again, there's some simple solutions. Lifestyle and dietary changes often helps uh, uh, many people. And that includes limiting fluids that are bladder irritants, exercising and, and pelvic floor physical therapy uh, often helps. If that doesn't work, we add some oral medications. Um, the benefit of medications is it's a pill you have to take. However, there are some downsides um, and it basically uh, is a lifelong medication that you have to take. And unfortunately, some of the good medication that we have have side effects uh, on the market that include dry mouth, which inevitably make you drink more water and therefore you're going more often to the bathroom, uh, blurry vision or dry eyes, constipation, which can worsen urinary symptoms, and also high blood pressure. Um, in fact, there was a recent survey that 72% of people stopped taking their bladder medication due to these side effects. So it's not a really a good long-term option. Then there are advanced therapies that we kind of uh, talk about once uh, the medical uh, treatment haven't worked. And for bladder control, this really includes the Medtronic interstem system, which we'll talk about, the Medtronic neural system, uh, and injected medication such as Botox. For bowel control, the options are slightly more limited, but also very good. Um, and that includes the Medtronic interstem system and some surgical options uh, with regards to the anal sphincter. So again, there's risks and benefits of each and we'll review a little bit of it. So Botox um, uh, is a medication that's used to treat overactive bladder. It's injected into the bladder muscle through a needle. Um, and its uh, effectiveness is quite comparable to oral medication. The downside is that it does 
need to be repeated every uh, few months uh, as it loses efficacy um, for a period of uh, four months or so. It also does not treat fecal incontinence. And there is a small percentage of people that have to rely on catheterizing because the Botox worked too well. So with that said, you know, 51% of patients do stop the treatments after two sessions, mostly because uh, people don't want to keep on going through the injection treatment every few months. The PTNM Medtronic Neurosystem is also a very safe, effective, minimally invasive uh, therapy. It's shown to reduce urgency, frequency, and urinary incontinence in 60 to 70% of patients. Um, it restores bladder function by gently stimulating the tibial nerve, but does not treat fecal incontinence. Um, and it's very safely de uh, delivered in the office environment. It's a 30-minute session and takes, uh, you know, one session per week for 12 weeks. And if uh, you have relief from that, then we uh, kind of start the maintenance sessions uh, for long-term relief. So the benefit is it's quick, easy, minimally invasive. The downside is you need to have persistent uh, treatment uh, to maintain your symptomatology. And finally, um, the sacral neuromodulation Medtronic system uh, is a system that basically corrects what the pathology is. So as I mentioned, the issue again is a breakdown in the communication between the brain, uh, the bladder and the bowel. And what this uh, stimulator does is that it restores that function. Um, the benefit is that there's actually a test that we do in the office that I'll talk about shortly um, to see if, it's, if you're a good candidate for it. And before I move on, actually, this, this system has been uh, on the market for well over 20 years, and it's FDA approved for all of these indications that we're talking about uh, with pretty high success rate. There's been studies that show uh, over 85 to 90% success rate uh, in reducing the symptoms over 50%. So the evaluation is quite simple. Um, the test is done in the office or an outpatient center, and we basically place a thin wire in the upper part of the buttock. Um, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, you're awake for this uh, part. And then the leads attached to an external device as shown on the uh, patient here with a little belt. And over a period of three to uh, seven days or so, we adjust various programs to see if your symptoms improved. And if your symptoms improved over 50% from where we were when we started, then we say, hey, this is a good treatment option uh, uh, for you. Um, and then we kind of decide on the permanent implant. So again, the technology, it has been around for several years. It's safe and effective. It has good uh, data showing how well it works. In fact, 89% of uh, people using the Medtronic uh, bowel control therapy experience long-term success. And similarly, 76% of patients experience success with their uh, bladder control, which is way more compared to medications, which is under 49%. So uh, is this the right therapy for everyone? Um, uh, the answer, the short answer is no. Uh, we do an evaluation in the office and see what type of incontinence you have, uh, what type of fecal incontinence you have, uh, evaluate your bladder and make sure everything else is healthy. And then we decide if it's the correct therapy. And again, if it is, um, there's a quick and easy test that can be done in the office or an outpatient center to see if it will work for you before we put the full implant. All right, and that's the conclusion. So uh, I'm happy to take any questions um, at this point. Um, I hope this was informative for everyone that joined us this evening. Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Syed, for that presentation. Um, I, I do have a lot of questions actually that have come in mm -hmm. um, during the talk. So um, I will get started. One of the first questions is, can I get an MRI with the inner stem system? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. And the short answer is yes. Um, historically, the answer was no, but recently we've uh, been able to develop technology where the MRI is completely safe with the uh, system. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, if you do want to ask a question, just feel free to click the Q&A button um, on your screen and there you can type in your questions. Um, here, I have a couple more that have come in. Um, do you see most of your patients, uh, do you see, do most of your patients see good results from the test? And I guess this is also test says tests slash um, implants. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say about, you know, if you appropriately select the patient, um, about 80 to 90% of my patients have had excellent success. 
uh, with the test. If the test in the office doesn't work, there is an advanced test that we do at the surgery center um, where the a permanent lead is placed and often uh, five to 10% of those patients will respond as well. Um, so overall, I think the success rate uh, in my practice, it's uh, 85 to 90%, which is comparable to the long-term data that exists. Okay. And one okay. thing I'd like to add is, I think the biggest thing that's underutilized is for fecal incontinence. Um, and it's amazing how, how those patients have significant restoration of their quality of life um, after this device. And often I'll hear, you know, I'll do it for urinary complaints because that's what the patient comes to me for. Uh, and often after the fact, I'll hear, hey, my, my bowels are way better. Because um, um, so, people just don't like talking about the fecal incontinence part. Um, but um, that, that's, uh, that's where it's a really a unique therapy. Well, that was great because that was one of the questions that came, that came in, Dr. Sayed, was um, if it worked for um, bowel control. Um, so we'll move on to the next one then. Uh, we already answered the question with the MRI, so that was answer, asked again. Um, and then that was again asking about bowel incontinence that was asked. That's another one. Um, here was one, um, what is the recovery after the test? And then also what is the recovery after the implants? That's so, a uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So after the test, the recovery isn't, uh, so much so in the sense that you, you don't really have any restrictions except, uh, no swimming pools and, and, and baths for until the leads are in. So that's again, about three to five days. There are no incisions or cuts on you. The, the leads, the test leads are deployed all through a little needle. Um, so there's not much recovery um, in that sense, except the three days you have the leads. And then after the implant, um, the recovery is about two weeks. So for pain, the biggest incision you have is about three to four centimeter um, in the buttock. Um, and the uh, biggest restriction again I have is uh, avoiding swimming pools, baths, oceans, just to prevent infection. Um, pain, most people are pretty minimal. I just have Tylenol and Motrin um, for pain control. And the results are pretty, pretty immediate uh, you know, that you see with the, once the system is installed. And also the other thing to, uh, to note is that nowadays uh, with Medtronic, uh, the system lasts up to 10 to 15 years. So I uh, don't really need to change anything or change the battery unless there's an accident or a fall which breaks the lead and then you need to change it out. Okay, perfect. That was that was one of the next questions was how long does it last? So you answered that question. Um, and then the other one is, um, I, I guess you did it. Can you see the device under the skin? Um, no, you can feel it, but you definitely cannot uh, see it. Uh, so we play, we put it in the uh, in the buttock. Uh, so you can see the incision on the outside, but you can't see the device. Okay. Next question is, can you? I guess the question is, can you manipulate the device um, once you have the have the implants? So can I, I guess they're asking us if you can make changes or change. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's controlled through like a little telephone, like a smartphone, and there are various programs that can be changed. Um, in terms of physically moving the device, no, it shouldn't move unless there's again a fall or a trauma of some sort, but you can adjust the programs and, you know, check it, make sure it's working well and stuff like that. Okay. Um, is there an age range um, for, is there an age where they, a patient can't, can no longer get this device um, was one of the questions. Right. Great, great question. So uh, from the FDA, there's no age limit on who can get the device and who can't. From my perspective as a physician, obviously um, I would want to not put anyone who has multiple medical issues under anesthesia and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we make sure you're healthy enough to undergo the procedure before before we do it, but there's no age restrictions. I've had good results with people in their late 80s, for example, and similarly, I've had excellent results with someone in their 30s, so there's really no age restriction. In fact, in my training, uh, we did it in the pediatric world with, with good success. Oh, okay. Um, where is this, um, where, where is the test and implant performed? Um, so it's usually performed either the implants performed at a surgery center and the test is usually also performed at an outpatient center uh, and rarely in the office. Okay. And I think that looks like all the questions. There was a couple duplicates here. Um, oh, there was one here. What about a TSA security check? 
But that's a that's a great question. So Medtronic gives a little implant card uh, to show to show that you have a little bit of a you have an implant in there. And I haven't heard any issues. Christy, have you heard of any issues with this? No, that that was something that was the case many many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but no, no, no longer um, patients um, bring their card. They say they have a medically implanted device. Usually the, the TS agent will ask, where is that device implanted? And they'll just use the wand. They won't have you go into the x-ray machine. It doesn't have any, it won't damage the um, implant whatsoever if you were to go into the, um, the x-ray machine, but they just, they just wand you instead. Um, I guess that's their protocol for safety from the TSA side, right. but it, there's no, um, no interaction. Good. So I guess that was all of the questions. Thank you all for your time and participation tonight in the webinar. Um, you can see Dr. Syed's information on the screen. He's both in Palm Harbor and in Trinity, and uh, you'll see his phone number there. And you can give the office a call um, to make an appointment to see him, to see if you would be a candidate for InterSTEM. Awesome. Yeah, no, uh, Christy, thank you for hosting this. Um, and. Again, I appreciate all everyone joining this evening and spending some time with us to learn about incontinence. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night.